from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Is and you know what it is. I'm just waiting on the family to come on through with it. And you guys should be in here in a moment. So I'm just waiting on you guys right now. What's going on, family, from all over the world? We're doing the late night tap in right here on the Twitter space. Ready to chop it up. Glad you guys are tuning in. Um, Welcome, everybody, to the space. Waiting on y'all to come on in. Why don't y'all give me a nice retweet as you come on in the space? Give a nice retweet, ladies and gentlemen. And um, we're going to get right into what we need to get into. A lot of folks are coming in now. So come on, man. Y'all, y'all up. Some of y'all work from home. Some of you are stay-at-home parents. Some of you are on Section 8. So you don't have to go nowhere in the morning. Some of you... Just be up late for the hell of it. Some of you are working at Amazon right now. Nevertheless, I welcome you in here. What's up, D. Tubman? What's up, Grinds? I see everybody in here. Um, and before we get started, you guys know it's um, Who Do Who Do Heritage Month. National Who Do Heritage Month, and that means you guys need to be over at rootworkstyle.com getting your root work deodorant. That's where you need to be. You need to get your root work deodorant right now at rootworkstyle.com. And um, don't forget, guys, tomorrow we should um, we should be premiering the trailer for the new documentary. The trailer is ready, just making sure some other things are set up. But yeah, the trailer's ready, and we should be ready to let it pop off tomorrow, just making sure some other things are lined up. But um, yeah, y'all stay tuned for that. Most likely, we're going to go ahead and have that released tomorrow. It is ready, and it looks real crisp. We're just making sure some other things are being lined up. But waiting on everybody to get in the room. All right. What I want to talk about, I'm going to get some calls in a minute. We're talking about why a lot of black Americans, foundation of black Americans in particular, are really pushing back on immigration right now. Right now, there's a major border crisis because foundation of black Americans, we are demanding tangibles. The Democrats who we've been supporting and we've been the Democrat base for a long time, They've been running the scam and the con game on us, and they found out that we're not really trying to feel that. We ain't feeling that. We're not rocking with the con games no more. We're telling them we're going to have to have something tangible specifically for our lineage group. We're not going to do the whole kumbaya thing right now. We're talking business. This ain't about loving and hugging and all get together. Because whenever we as black people, foundational black Americans in particular, when we start talking about what we need that's tangible with us, they don't talk the way they talk with other groups. Other groups, it's all about what they're going to get and the numbers. When the Asian community is aggrieved, they're talking about $3 billion here. 1500 billion whatever there uh, 150 million here they're they're talking numbers when they talk about the LGBT community 
They're saying 50 million is going to go here. 20 million is going to go there. They're throwing numbers out there. With all these other groups, they just get right to the nitty gritty. With us, when we talk about what we need, well, we got to set up a commission and we got to do an 800 page report. And also we need to be out here loving and hugging each other. Let's all come together. They start using these emotional words. You know, we got to stop, you know, let's stop hate and uh, we're going to stop the hate and be all about equality and love. And we got to learn how to get together and uh, be diverse. We got to be diverse. We, we start using these terms that really have a lot of emotional connotations to them. We all need to get together and we're all one and we're all God's people. There's no race. There's just the human race. And, you know, we all just got to get together and you know, see past our racial differences and see that we're just all one. We, we get that talk. And that's a con game. That's an emotional play. Because a lot of black folks have gone for that. A lot of black folks say, oh, you know, I do need a little white love in my life. I, 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 a good hug from from white women. So I love that. You know, yeah. Now nah, that ain't working like it used to. Yeah, the the reparations hug. Go look at the Bucci Bear. The last no 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 no. It wasn't the last one, but it was one of the um Bucci Bear episodes where we had a character who's promised to give reparations hugs. They are gonna hug everybody. That's real. A lot of these skits are based on reality. So we're not trying to get reparations hugs. We're trying to get some real tangibles. And we haven't wavered off that. And they're not used to us not wavering. Because a lot of times when we talk about what we need as far as tangibles, hey, we, we go to the government, we go to our elected officials and tell them, hey, we, we, we're going to need something. Then they'll shame us. They'll send a couple of Negroes out here. Hey, y'all stop begging the government. Y'all pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Y'all stop, stop being lazy. You see all these other people come over here. They come over here with $2 in their pocket and they come over here and be successful. Y'all need to be ashamed of yourself. See, that don't work either because now we're seeing all the money they're giving to these damn immigrants. So y'all not going to shame us with all of that pull your damn self up by your bootstraps and we're looking at just money being thrown at these immigrant groups. These people are getting subsidized hotel stays at nice hotels. They're getting prioritized with jobs and they're getting all types of health benefits with our tax dollars. And out there in Chicago, they've been very vocal because Chicago is one of the ground zero places that they're just dumping them off by the, the, the loads. They're getting immigrants from all these different countries and they're sitting them right down in these black neighborhoods, especially out there in Chicago. And the Chicago family, they're really speaking out heavily, heavily about it. There was another um, press conference they had today where there was a, uh, I think it was a community center or something like that, that's smack dab in the black neighborhood and they're trying to make it an immigrant shelter. And the community is like, hell, hey, hey, come on. Hey, we don't want this here. See, they're not used to us pushing back like that. I take my hat off to Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. We have a right to say, hey, we don't want these communities where our, our resources are already limited. We don't want this as a dumping ground and a testing center for people we don't know anything about. You're just opening the gate and letting people come over from all of these countries with these weird backgrounds that nobody's vetting. And you're setting them right down in a black neighborhood. You're doing this all over the country. And, and the black community is saying enough is enough. That's another reason why the Democrats are in trouble with the black vote. And they're doing this because of the black vote. See, this is like a, a case of the, the what came first, the chicken or the egg. Because the Democrats are doing bad with black voters, they think they're going to just flood the zone with all of these these this new voter voter block, they're going to have a new voting base. So they're trying to flood the zone. And that's why when they let all of these illegal immigrants over, they immediately try to get them IDs. 
you see. Just like in Minnesota, they make it so that undocumented immigrants can get an ID. That's so they can hurry up and vote. Because remember, if you get an ID in one state, you can get an ID anywhere. You understand? So they want to get these people vote ready. So when they start running that game on us about, man, we got to do something about the Republicans. The Republicans is trying to make getting an ID to vote. They're trying to make that a requirement. And, you know, black people, this is this is going to affect you, black people. But we fought for the right to vote. They're trying to take us back to Jim Crow. Remember they were running that game? Y'all remember that game they were running on us when the Republicans were making it a requirement that people have an ID to vote, which is good. That's a good thing. The Democrats were trying to get us to stomp for it. Hey, black people, look what they're doing to us. No, ain't no us. There's no us. We're fine. We got IDs. No, but a lot of poor black people, who they, they have troubles getting ID. Nigga, stop it. Stop it. If a motherfucker ain't got no ID, they're a crackhead or something. They don't count. Most black, we got IDs. We got IDs. We got our documents. Um, um, not having an ID is not our damn problem. That's not an issue that we have. We got identification. We have all of all of the identification we need. So they tried to run that game on us and it didn't work because the real deal was they were trying to get us to stump for the whole ID thing so that it would benefit these immigrants coming over here so they can get IDs, be able to vote and then practice their damn anti-black racism on us. So there's a pushback. And the people out there in Chicago in particular, they're really, really vehement about, hey, we don't want all of these people being flooded into our neighborhoods. That's a bad thing. A lot of these people come from criminal backgrounds. A lot of these people, man, y'all letting them out of jail. Um, these people, got some kind of sex crimes that they've done. They're out there trapping. It, it, it's, it's bad on the community. And the limited resources that we already have is already a problem. So we should be more up in arms about that. And we got to stop going for all of the symbolic gestures. I saw a tweet of Kamala Harris earlier. She was up here swearing in that LaFonza lady. Like, look at this, the first openly black lesbian being sworn in by a black woman. Oh, this is great. No, they, no it wasn't Kamala Harris, it was the NAACP. They tweeted it. It was NAACP. They tweeted, come on, let me, let me read the tweet. Some of you guys look at my page. Let me read the tweet that the NAACP tweeted. They think we're going for this symbolism nonsense. The tweet was, hold on. This moment will go down in history. LaFonza, the first black, openly LGBTQ senator, an only black woman to serve in the nation's highest legislative body was sworn in today by the nation's first black female vice president. We love it here. Go to hell. Y'all can go to hell with that. They can go all the way to hell with that. We're not going for no symbolism because when it comes to doing something for black people or black women, they ain't doing a damn thing. Y'all don't y'all don't forget Kamala Harris was locking black women up left and right out here in California, man. Don't get it twisted. And I saw some talk show or some um news show, and they were talking about the Democrats' polling numbers being down. They were talking about how low the Democrat polling numbers are. And they made a, a very strong point about Kamala Harris. They were talking about some of the poll numbers and the problem with Kamala Harris. See, they try to make it seem like Kamala Harris's numbers of her popularity within the black community is low because of us black men hating on her black girl magic. Remember that little con game they were trying to play? Um, remember when Kamala was first running and I made a tweet about her doing all of that performative dancing and shit. All of the Democrats attacked me. I'm talking about when I say all of them, I mean all of them. They had a little meeting at the think tanks and they all thought, okay, we need to attack this nigga. They were all attacking me for criticizing Kamala doing her performative sister girlisms. And they see that I wasn't the only one who felt like that. She's black only around election time. And the minute she wins, shout out to the first Asian American. But 
whenever Kamala Harris goes out here and you see her polling numbers are low when it comes to black people, they try to sit here and say, well, it's these hateful, jealous black men just hating a, a black woman shine. You know, Roland and those guys were saying that. Y'all hate to see a sister girl um, blow up. Y'all see, hate to see a highly intelligent black woman miss me with that. Y'all hate to see her with a white man. You remember Michael Eric Dyson was talking all of that Sambo talk. Yeah, well, y'all, if y'all black men still had stepped up, um, Katanji Brown and Kamala Harris wouldn't have to go get a white man. The white man appreciate their chocolate charm and their caramel charisma and their dark deliciousness. And uh, Y'all remember he was saying that coon shit? <laughs> the white man appreciates them. They were running that con game on us, but here's the real deal, though. The reason why Kamala Harris's numbers are in the tank with black people and this white woman pointed this out because black women don't fuck with no damn Kamala Harris. That's what it is. Black women don't like Kamala. They don't like to say that out loud. That's the reality. Black women don't like no damn Kamala Harris because sisters, foundational black American sisters can see how fake she is. You know why? Because sisters have to deal with the Kamala Harris every day at work. Y'all got a, a, a white ass kissing mammy who who thinks she's exotic or whatever and tries to pull some kind of racial rank over you because she's mixed with something or she's exotic or she's some type of um, non-black other. And they got her in some kind of supervisor position and she's the designated work mammy. So she fakes that sister girl shit around you and you can see through it. And you know good and well she goes to the supervisor, she goes to the bosses and tells everything that you're doing. That's why you know not to tell her scamming as your business. Y'all got a Kamala Harris at your job. Fake as hell. See you every time. Hey, girl. Girl, look at your hair. Who You got to tell me who braids your hair, girl. Please. She tried to sister girl you and, and girl, you know, girl, you know, you white folks, boy. Yeah, I'm trying to get a supervised position with these white folks. You know how they do us, girl. And then you get to talking. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to been have me a supervised position. You get to telling this mammy little shit, and then she run tell the boss, and then your ass get written up because this little mammy you confided in and told on your ass. Yeah, the the Kamala Harris at the job. She's the designated snitch. She's the Negro whisperer. You got a Kamala Harris at every job. And they get around Zaddy. Um, Bob, Shaquetta, I found out that she's been faking sicknesses, taking vacations to Cancun. Yeah, well, remember when she said she was sick? Her ass wasn't sick. That big black bitch went down to Mexico. So they be telling on your ass. <laughs> them, them Kamala Harris types. <laughs> That's why people don't like the sisters don't like Kamala, fake ass. That's who don't like her. As, as you shouldn't like her. You think? We don't like her either. She's phony. And when somebody sits up here and says what she ain't going to do for black society, yeah, all that dancing ain't going to fix that. You ain't going to dance your way out of that. Yeah. But um, we in here. Let me go. Y'all raise your hand. Let me get some folks in here in a second because we've got a lot of folks in here. So I want to chop it up with the family and see what's on the family's mind. Let's get Sir Major in here real quick. Sir Major, hop in, bro. What's up, Brother Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Man, first of all, I've got to give you, um, give you your praises, brother. Uh, thank you so much for educating us because you called this shit out almost a year ago. You were talking about how we were going to be replaced by immigration. Uh, yeah. And I just posted a video out of Chicago, Illinois, where there was a Hispanic migrant or illegal alien who beat the dog shit out of a black brother who happened to be homeless. Wow. And yeah, so the videos just just got posted. Uh, the mayor of Chicago is going to have blood on his hands. Mark my words. Mm -hmm. Man, man, thank you, brother. Man, dude. And what's what's bad 
we've seen cases where some of these immigrant women from these immigrant backgrounds out here jumping on little black girls. It was like some kind of um, Pacific Island chick out here. We thought she was Hispanic, but she was actually like Samoan or something. Beat up a little black girl in Long Beach. There were, it was somewhere else where there were two Mexican women jumped on a black girl. Yeah, some of these cowardly people start attacking our kids, man. So we're not stumping for that immigration like the Democrats want us to stump because we know what it is. You're just bringing over a bunch of people who got damn hostilities towards us. What's up, Ani? What's going on, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good. First of all, I want to send prayers up to James Small. Yes. He's in the hospital right now. Yes. I spoke with him earlier. Yes. Okay. And uh just wonder if you saw that they got the immigrant that played in Selma playing Bass Reeves in a new movie coming out this year. Yeah. And how Sam Samuel L. Jackson spoke on that. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on what, that. What did Sam say about it? Well, Sam said back then that the, the only reason they get the British actors is because they have classical training is in, in their less money. Mm. So uh, that's that's pretty. Yeah, he's been he, he uh, all of the immigrants have been commenting on what Samuel L. Jackson has said, Idris Elba, Daniel Kalula and all of that. But, yeah, he said that. Wow. I'm, I'm going to look into that. But, yeah, the dude. He, he's a good actor. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. And I like Idris Elba. I think Idris Elba is a phenomenal actor. Um, <clears throat> now, the guy who played, who's now playing Bass Reeves, and he played in Selma as Dr. King. But let's keep it a buck. I saw Selma. Nigga, not memorable at all. Yeah, yeah, you don't remember anything from that movie. I saw it and damn near went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. The soul wasn't there, man. The soul and the spirit just wasn't there. The spirit of Doc, it, it wasn't there, man. You know, not even being on no hater shit. You know, I can respect somebody's acting chops, but the spirit ain't there. You know, when you play a historical figure, man, the the, the spirit, you got to kind of have the spirit of that person, and that comes from the lineage, man. That's why um, Lawrence Fishburne played Ike Turner so well. He had that lineage spirit. That's why Denzel played Malcolm so well. Even Denzel was like, hey, some of that shit, you can't get that from a script. You know, I was channeling the spirit of Malcolm. You know, you can't really get that from a script. That's why certain people, when they try to play some of our historic figures and they're not from the lineage, it falls flat. Cynthia Revo, again, the Harriet thing. That's why it, it, that, that wasn't a cultural phenomenon. Nobody really felt it. White folks liked it. The few who went to saw it, we didn't feel that. And some of y'all forgot that Cynthia Revo played Aretha Franklin in a very forgetful film. None of y'all even remember that. That's how bad that flopped. I don't know if it was a TV movie or something. It, it, just the aesthetics of it was horrible. You don't look nothing like Aretha. Don't act nothing like Aretha. You know, no, 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 no. You know, you don't have the energy of the spirit. That's just what it is. And they would feel the same way when we try to play some of their icons. They don't want um, um, us playing their icons. They want their people playing their icons. Fair enough. But a lot of them just don't have that that spirit. When we play some of these characters, th these directors, they understand that the spirit will resonate with black audience members. They don't want that spirit connection to be there. You know, that's why they had such a problem with the Malcolm X movie. And, and I give props to Spike for making it happen because they were trying to sabotage the brother. But we felt that. We felt that. When Denzel played um, um, Malcolm, we felt it. We felt that. When Angela Bassett played Tina, we felt that. You understand? We felt it. And speaking of Tina Turner, there's a clip going around of Tina Turner talking about Africa. And some of the tethers got mad. It's an old clip. This is a clip it's from the 70s. And she was talking about why she don't really like touring in Africa. She was like, you know, hey, man, I, you know, I don't really like going over there, to be honest. You know, I go over there and the food ain't good and I'm not really getting a good vibe from the people. So, I, shit, I don't like going. She kept it a buck. Well, this was in the 70s. She just kept it a buck. Yeah, 
I don't know. Just don't like going over there. And they're like, oh, this she, she doesn't like herself. Oh, look at this self-hating woman. She doesn't like her history. Yes. And what's funny, the, the, the Negroes sitting up here talking about how she don't like herself and a lot of black Americans. Oh, y'all niggas. Tina Turner is a representative of you niggas. You hit Africa. You niggas hit your motherland. You niggas don't know who you are. You hit your motherland. And then you look at the nigga page who's saying that they're in Indiana somewhere. They're always in Cleveland, Indiana, Valdosta. You're, you're tweeting about us hating the motherland and your ass is over here. It never fails. Do y'all understand how silly y'all look when y'all do that? Like, for real, this is why we be getting on y'all ass. Do you know how silly you look when you say that? Nobody hates the motherland more than a tether. Y'all niggas are, the, are getting the first thing smoking to get the hell out of there. Don't, don't, don't try to sell us the shame package of not wanting to be in Africa. Nigga, you, you gave somebody a hand job at the green card office to get the hell out of there. Nobody hates Africa more than tethers. Keep it real. The shaming tactics don't work no more. That ain't going, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. Y'all can cut that bullshit out. Y'all go talk to Umar and people like that who's still running with the Wakanda package. <laughs> when the niggas say, all, all the Pan-Africanists are not over there. They talk that Pan-African shit right over here. All the Pan-Africanists ain't set up a damn thing over there. That's why all that shit is going in one ear and out the other. Ain't nobody going for that no more. Man, it's, it's late in the day. We're trying to get our shit popping over here. Ain't nobody about to, to run around selling Wakanda packages. All right, well, let's get some calls in here. Let's get, um, let me see. We've got a lot of folks. Let's get Rob Liberty. Rob Liberty. Rob Liberty. Yeah, hey, Tariq. I, I've been a fan for a couple years. I mean, I just appreciate you being a genuine guy. I'm obviously on the other side of the spectrum, but I mean, I 100% respect you. But my question is, you say people are fed up with Kamala. I mean, what do you think the, the voter turnout is going to be in the next election, realistically? It's, um, it's going to be very interesting, man. I'm telling you, the Democrats are in trouble. This is why they're doing all this weird stuff to Trump putting charges on them. These are desperation moves. You know, this is what they got to do to, to slow down Trump's momentum because they, the Democrats know they don't have no momentum with their voter base, which is us. We're their voter base. They're in trouble and they know it. And these numbers are going to be dismal around election season. So they're trying something. So they're desperately flooding the zone with all of these immigrants. This is a desperation play. And they're going to try to get them IDs as quickly as possible and offer them um, Goya and beans and all types of shit to get to the polls. They're going to bribe them to get to the polls in order to vote. It, it's This is a big old con game. In a I mean, that, that that's scary stuff. I mean, what you're saying is is I don't necessarily know if that's the case, but I mean, that that's realistic and that's honestly scary stuff. I just hope people listen to that stuff yeah all right man but thank you so much yeah man this this is gonna be because you know they they can't they, they're not gonna keep trying to bribe us to go to the polls they can bribe old niggas you know they offer some chicken wings and collard greens and that, that ain't gonna work no more that ain't gonna work because yeah, you can only do that with the old negroes and the old negroes are dying off unfortunately and because i think these are elders but you got a young voter base right now and our young folks are waking up because they're listening to people like us. Our young people ain't going for the, the okie doke no more. Some of the younger voters, I'm talking, I'm not talking about the elderly Negroes, but some of the younger ones, some of the 50 and under, they're like, hey, no, 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 no. You know, we, we, we need to get something. No, we need something for our vote. Y'all, we, we got too many of these immigrant groups in here. Y'all ain't doing nothing about that. You're not doing anything about a crime bill. We need a crime bill, and you guys are dragging ass on that and playing little games. And, you know, what are we really voting for? 
if you guys are just going to have contempt for us, what the hell are we voting for? So that's the, the consensus of a lot of foundational black Americans now. All right, let's get um, to the moon. To the moon. What's up to the moon? Waiting on to the moon to hop up. And while we're waiting on to the moon, because this phone might be a little janky right now, um, let's get um, Imhotep. Then we'll get to the moon if his phone gets right. Imhotep, where you at, man? Oh, Imhotep is having problems. All right, let's try. Let me see. Let's get um, FBA sauce. All right, FBA sauce, hop on, brother. FBA sauce. All right, where you at? Okay, y'all got to get y'all phones together, man. Y'all janky phones slow up the momentum. All right. Let's try again. Let's get, um. hold on. I'm not going to get that person. Let's get, um. let's get Stono. Stono Tone. All right, Stono Tone, can you get on? All right, one of y'all niggas get on. Everybody phone is janky at the same time. Hello. Uh, all right, who is this? This is Nakeem. We, we, we spoke We spoke a few months ago. Nakeem? Yes, yes, Nakeem. I don't remember, yes. but what's up? Where you, no. where, you, where you from? Where you from, Nakeem? You see my flag. I'm from Nigeria. So. I can't see your flag, to be honest. I, okay, I, I can't see what's what. But go ahead. You're from Nigeria. So what's on your mind? Well, what's on my mind, sir? Uh, I was wondering why, why we don't deserve reparations, sir. We've been, working, we've been working in the States for years. We have so many doctors, you know, so, so, so many uh, plumbers, you know, work, working everywhere. So what, how does that qualify you for reparations? Well, when you guys come in from high cholesterol, from eating all the chitlins and taco salad, we, we come and give, give you niggas the medicine. <laughs> Nigga, your, your Nigerian accent is horrible. <laughs> you, keep, you keep flipping out of accents. Uh, Nigga, you're not Nigerian. <laughs> you're a different kind of tether. Yes. What, what, where, where are you from for real? You're a different kind of tether. I, I, I was born in the States. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm hearing my mom's, from, my, mom's from, my mom's from Algeria. Uh, no, no, nigga. I think you're Caribbean. You're Caribbean trying to sound, <laughs> sound Nigerian. Because I can hear musk flakes <laughs> dropping from under your arms right now. Uh, I can hear it. All right, now get your ass off here and get you some root work. All right. That's a Caribbean tether. All right. There's a certain tinge of must that I can tell. Hello. All right, what's up, Joe? Joe. <clears throat> Joe, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Tariq? I'm good. What's on your mind? I'm just enjoying the show, brother. All right. What you think about Ebony uh, Williams with that stuff, man? That was crazy talking. She changed. She flipping the script. Who? Ebony Williams. Oh, okay. Um, I I don't know too much about it, but anyway, right? My nigga just hey, when people just kind of call up with random topics. Trying to change the topic about something else. I don't. All right, let's get um, let's get um, Frank. Let's get Frank in here. All right, let's get Mister Frank. Yeah, what's going on? What's up, Frank? How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I've been following you for a minute, man. I was just curious, like, so my thing is, just, like, I went to Howard University. You know, I got a good job outside of that, and I've been making good money. Uh, my parents are half. Well, my mother is from the States. She's African-American, FBA. My dad is Caribbean. But my question is, is like, at what point is the unity, is the unity of black people that are FBA and non-FBA, like, what is the, what is required for us to kind of come together to some degree? We don't have, we don't have to do, no, 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 let's, let's get something straight. Yeah. Our lineage is our lineage. Let's get off this shit. Every time we start talking about our lineage, 
Then there's all these weird kumbaya requirements. Well, we do. We we gonna get together and love each other. They don't give. They ain't got no, no, no. I'm not talking. Lineage. I'm not talking about. No, I understand. I'm not talking about no kumbaya shit. I understand. Okay, I was okay, talking okay. politically though. I got it. I got it. But no, no. But let's just get it clear. Let's get it clear. We don't have to do shit. All right. Our lineage is our lineage. All right. It, it, when it comes to talking about foundational Black American lineage. It always goes into, well, as FBAs and um, Caribbeans and other peoples, what is it going to take for us to get together and join hands? And uh, we, we don't have to do none of that. If we do, cool. If we don't, cool. That doesn't change our lineage. All right? Our lineage is our lineage. Our lineage is foundational Black American slash freedmen slash descendants of slaves, slash native black Americans. That is our lineage, no matter what. So people coming in whining, our lineage is still our lineage. People trolling, oh, you niggas are divisive. Yep, but our lineage is still our lineage. You niggas hit us. Our lineage is still our lineage. All right, no matter, the whining don't stop that. The trolling don't stop that. The trying to criminalize us. You niggas, you're a, you're a het group. That don't change the lineage. Just because you done made up some group in your mind, that doesn't change our lineage. We are a lineage of foundational Black Americans. We self-identified our lineage instead of letting other people name us like we're cattle. We're saying what the name is. They can't do anything about that because it's called codification. You think? When I was over in Easter Island, and a lot of these places that were colonized, and I take my hat off to some of the people, even though they're colonized, a lot of them will be on code. The indigenous people will be on code with each other, and they will still maintain their indigenous names. Like I was in Easter Island. The Easter Island is in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I was having a conversation with uh, a young lady at one of the waitresses at a restaurant or something. And we we're just kind of having small talk. And I, I, um, I think we're asking about directions and some of the tourist sites or whatever. And I think I said something like, um, what's on the other side of Easter Island? And she politely corrected me and, and then continued to, to speak. I said, um, what's on the other side of Easter Island? She's like, um, you mean Rapa Nui? But yeah, over there they have such and such, because the original name is Rapa Nui. That's the original name of Easter Island. And if there's an indig indigenous person there, if you refer to it as Easter Island, a lot of times they'll correct you in a, in a polite way. And I'm not mad at them. Even though they've been colonized, they are still on code with each other. They know what the deal is. So yeah, the white people and the colonizers use the term Easter Island, but among themselves, and when you speak to them, they still want the respect of their indigenous self-identified language. It's Rapa Nui. You see. So we got to have that same kind of vibe. When people want to try to name us and designate us all the time, no, 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 we ain't doing all that. We're a foundational black American. That's why when people are always trying to do these little DNA tests and all of these DNA tests do the same thing. They, they trace you back to some well, tribe and they you know, watch the wording for some of these tests. Because you do these tests, they always say the same thing. Well, you share the same DNA with um, some Yoruba people. You share some of the same DNA with some of the Yoruba and some of the Igbo tribe. They, they say the same shit. You dig? And watch the wording. You share the same DNA. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that you were even a part of the tribe. A lot of people share DNA. You know? That doesn't mean you were part of that damn tribe. So watch the words. Watch the language they use. Because, again, when they try to trace you back to a certain country over in Africa, remember, those countries are relatively new so the land boundaries aren't even the same as they were a couple of hundred years ago it's a completely different land 
completely different people. You understand? The people in Africa were moved and ran all over the place over there within the last few hundred years. They don't really have no strong roots in these countries, family. Do you understand that? I'm not saying that to denigrate our brothers and sisters from the motherland. Uh, we got love, but let's be real. Some of us have been over there. Y'all don't have the deep roots that people try to pretend over here that they do. You just don't. Because people have been run around over there, remixed and flipped and sent to other places, and they abandon one place and go to another because the, the Arab colonizers were over there before the European colonizers. So the, it's been stirred up over there like crazy. But um, e -E -E, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm just wondering why we don't deserve reparation. Because what, what are you going to get? You got to go to the British government for reparations. Why don't you go to Britain? Well, sir, we've been here for, for years, sir. We've, we've done more work than you niggas. You guys bring drugs to the hoods. You kill niggas. I can't even have fun in a club. I get mugged. So what, 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 what can I do? What, what can I do to have fun in the club? Well, what you do is roll the windows down from your Uber to let the must out. That's what you can do. And that'll save a lot of lives because that must is killing niggas. All right, let's get some more people in here. All right, let's get, um, okay, let's get uh, Fuad. I think that's his name. Fuad. I think that's his name. Fuad. Hop on. Turn your microphone on, Fuad. If you can, that'll be great. And then we'll get... Um... What's up, Tariq? Uh, this is Fuad. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Fuad. Now, what part of the Middle East are you from? Uh, so I'm actually here from the States. Um, I'm what you would consider a tether. I, I know that. <laughs> but, but what part of the Middle East are you from? What part are you from? Which part? So I'm not from the Middle East. I'm actually from Africa. Uh, oh, Somali? Somali. There yep. you go. There you go, my man. Uh, Somali, Somali people got a lot of bad rep, uh, especially on uh, uh, the spaces here. Because uh, I be hearing, I, I, I listen in, and it's terrible. Uh, I will say. Uh, now, why do you think that is? Uh, there, there's a lot of um, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, uh, just like bad mouthing the black Americans in this country, which is kind of sad. And honestly, a lot of it I'm surprised by. Um, there is um, like stereotype, stereotypical issues within Somalia uh, with the, uh, some of the people that are what, what you would call uh, Jarer, is what you would call, but it's called, it's, it's Jarer. And, uh, yeah, well, they call, they call us that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they they say the same thing to the Africans there. So I mean, it's right. not just the, the black Americans. It's just a, it's a certain look of black people that they would just consider that too, and they do consider themselves um, to be more Arab or whatever. But a lot of that is bullshit. Yep. I mean, Somali people yep. are are ethnically Africans. They're black people. Um, most of that stuff is just brainwashed uh, from. Right. Colonial times and yeah, there's, there's a lot of BS in that mix. Yeah, they they um, think they're I, Arabs. They think that they're Arabs. A lot of them East Africans, um, that fresh and fit. They 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 think that they're like a dark version of the white Arabs. So yes, yeah, a lot of stuff that they bring, and we start checking their asses, and then they want to cry. Oh, y'all divisive because we ain't letting them bring their um, wannabe Arab arrogance to try to undermine us, but go ahead. Super, super, super arrogant. Uh, but I, I do have, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I do have a few things to say uh, one yeah. towards the topic. Uh, there's a new um, video that was trending on Twitter that I saw recently, and uh, it's a brother that's in New York, and he was walking by filming, and he had saw a building where there was uh, a few people coming out of, and they were housing migrants. And then this one dude that looked like he was uh, from Africa um, originally. He looked like an African dude, and it looked like he was uh, whitening himself up. So he definitely looked like a, 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 what you would call a sambo, I guess. Uh, 
um, and you know he's telling him like um, what don't record he's he's making demands in public and this guy is a free citizen you know he's got the right to record and I think he's a native uh, New Yorker and mm. you know and he's 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 over here making orders and then there's another it's 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 all over Twitter it's, it's kind of hilarious uh, but you it goes back to your point as to non uh black americans or uh, non fbas just kind of uh you know uh not prioritizing you know Im- immigrants and um things of that nature uh but you know i i i do um i i agree with a lot of the points that you make but there are certain things i don't agree with um like what like what what don't you agree with well, one thing I don't agree with, there's a generalization that you do throw out there that I don't agree with. I think there's a lot of good people uh, that are not FBA for, for one. And I say that all the time. I, I say do. all the time people, all the time. So I don't generalize. Yeah. Come on. No, I, I do hear it, but some of it, uh, it's, 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 there's a lot of, um, I mean, you'll, you'll throw a lot of facts out there and then you'll, there's a spin that you throw in there. It's kind of, it's a narrative of yours. Uh, like what? That like what? I agree with. Uh, uh, for one example, is uh, uh, the fleeing mentality. Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of people fled, but there's the, the there's a reason as to why they fled, and there the, you got to kind of put some context into, into uh, no, why they fled. No, 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 because there's yeah. a reason why we deal with white supremacy, and we get tethers come over here all the time talking about ain't no white supremacy. They got a million. They try to shame us for saying, hey, man, a lot of shit is because of systematic white supremacy we got to deal with over here. We got to do a lot of fighting. And the tethers come over here after the plate has been made talking about ain't no white supremacy. There's a lot of opportunity. You niggas are just lazy. They don't want to hear no excuse or nothing as to why they got here because of us fighting for them. They don't want to hear that. They no, want to just that, talk about that, white people are and all of that shit. But when niggas are fleeing, now we got to be sympathetic to why they packed up some bologna sandwiches with some injera bread and, and ran to the first thing floating. All right. No. Uh, uh, I agree with you. But the thing is, uh, the, the reality in America is when you look at uh, black people who are in position of power, it's majority FBA people. And it's just it's difficult to pass legislation, obviously, in a system of white supremacy that's going to prioritize black Americans or just black people in general. It doesn't even have to be um, even black immigrants. I mean, there's no such thing as, there's no such legislation that really prioritize them in most communities. The other thing too, um, I do disagree with and I wanted to bring up was, there's a group of people in South uh, Carolina, um, I think it's South Carolina, and their, their name is, uh, they, they connect with uh, an African tribe I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba something like that. And uh, they're what you would consider FBA. Uh, they're native to South Carolina, and they have strong ties to Africa, and they express their African um, uh, traditions. They even have African communities that are, uh, or uh, black communities in South Carolina that are self-sustaining, and it's outside of white society. Um, you talking, talking about the Gullah Geechis? Uh, no, I think it's Yoruba, something like that. Yoruba tribe. I might be butchering the name, but uh, it just goes to show that, I mean, those are uh, black people from America that, you know, kept their roots, kept their um, uh, traditions, um, and still have a deep connection with Africa. Um, so, I mean, th- um, with those people... Um, there, there's a strong connection is what I'm saying. And I'm not saying, you know, everybody has to go back to Africa. Africa's got a lot of problems. And the reality is most people should, I mean, most Africans and most, most black people anywhere should be for reparations for black Americans because okay. even okay. if you don't... Well, let's, slow down. Even, let's, slow down. Let's, slow, let's slow down for a minute. Let's go back and you said that group over in South Carolina have this strong connection to Africa. Okay, there's a lot of black people here who still have some strong African connections and all of that. Here's the thing, brother. What African country is welcoming us over there 
with open arms without red tape. Where wow. where can we get that? Where can we get that connection honored in Africa? Where are the 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 that Yoruba tribe or the Yoruba whoever you said that's over there in South Carolina? What African country is offering them dual citizenship with no red tape? I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I'm somehow. No, uh, the answer is no. No, no, but go uh, ahead. no, no, no uh, here's the point I was going to make. It's not easy to do. Nobody can really just go. I can't go to certain parts, some countries in Africa and get. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I went to Africa for the first time in February and went to Somalia. And a lot of the stuff you say, you know, I will I will give you your your points on. We got a lot of issues there's there uh the standard of living there is very low compared to most uh countries outside of uh Africa what's that what does that have to do with offering well, so the, the point the point I was making here is I'm even me myself native Somali I, I go back to Somalia I can't even get uh citizenship I'm, I'm right. having issues trying to that get means citizenship they're off code with, it. They're off code with everybody but we're yeah. supposed to be on code with all of them. No, nah, no, nah, we're nah. all right. So, so the, the point, no, nah, but you're missing the point here. No, not really. Uh, Go. No, the, the, yeah, the, the point I'm making here, there's issues all around. It's not, nobody, nobody can really go back and just get uh, things handed to them in Africa that easy. They and get shit as you said, you gotta, huh? They can come over here and get shit handed to them, thanks to Foundation of Black Americans fighting to make it happen. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, but the reality is, Africa has a lot of issues. And you know, you you you'll you'll what you do is you you'll throw the facts out there, and nobody can argue the facts. The facts are the facts. But you got to spin. You you throw a spin, and What's the uh, spin? You, they got issues. We got issues. We got issues too. What issues yeah. do Africa have that we don't have? No, it's just some of the spin narratives that you throw out there of like uh, 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 the the fleeing the uh, yeah. a lot. You, you yeah, can't that's just called, generalize when, that. You when you no, dude, dude. If you and eighty niggas hop on an inner tube and hop in the Atlantic Ocean, that's fleeing. If you you mean, get yourself in a if you get in a suitcase and mail yourself to Italy. That's fleeing. You got people literally doing that. There's videos of people doing that. that. That's called fleeing. There's ships pulling up to ports in West Africa, and dudes are tripping over themselves jumping on that ship. Well, so here's the thing. First of all, with, uh, just in real life, just in real life, if somebody fleeing. robs you, right? So check this that's out. If somebody robs fleeing. you, if right. somebody robs you in real life, right? You you're gonna go back to where the robber took your belongings to, if they took it home with them or whatever you're gonna go back over there and try to claim it no no because it could be strategic uh, if you think about no, it it could be no, strategic no 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 most, no, the, most of western no, europe no no, no, America no, no robbed no. most of these countries y'all ain't going to food. arab countries you're not going to arab countries y'all coming here where the foundation of black americans are fighting the dominant society the arabs over there in west um, east africa they did a lot of decimating and, and destroying things y'all know better than to go over there raising hell because we ain't over y'all not running over there in the wait, arab wait, country wait, wait. The arab, the, what, okay so you can't they're, compare they're the arabs they're, they're, you can't compare the arabs to colonialism that's Dude. totally. You can't compare. That's not even the same type of robbery. Oh. Right now. That is well, not the same type of robbery. The Arabs were the first colonizers over there in West and in East Africa. The Arabs were over there colonizing. That's why people uh, speak Arabic and they uh, practice Islam over there in a lot of those mm -hmm. countries. The Arab colonizers were the same type of colonization. First of all, the the most recent colonization were Europeans in uh, what, West, the what, Western what you, world mainly. What that was the most dude over there. In East, dude, I've been over there, dude. You had people like Tipu Tip over there in Zanzibar had the slave trade popping over there in East Africa. Don't play that game. Those okay, Arabs. What year, what year is that? What year? How far dude, back are you going? Hundreds. Huh? We're talking about in the eighteen hundreds. The they had that popping over there. Okay, but colonialism was more recent in Africa. All right, dude, y'all been so, colonized so, over and over again. That, you that, no, no, that trauma is more recent. And that that looting is uh, can there are people still alive that were under colonialism? You're talking about 1800s. That's 
Yeah, I mean, eventually people will recover. So that's not as much. That's not as damning. Y'all been getting colonized and recolonized by by different entities, dude. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, don't try to remix your history, brother. Come nah, on, man. I mean, you're throwing a spin here, man. So I'm not. But, what, yeah. what am I? What am I spinning, sir? What am I spinning? Well, very simple. Uh, in this in this matter here, uh, the uh, the Arabs were much later. Uh, than uh, colonialism. Colonialism is much uh, was much sooner, and we've been robbed, along with most of the other countries, just out, not even in Africa, outside of Africa. The other thing too, this country is uh, having lots of issues. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the border is just wide open. We're letting everyone in. I don't agree with that. Uh, I mean, I'm I've been here most of my life. Uh, I came here as a kid, and you know, in Somalia there was a civil war in the 90s that had just uh, had everybody uh, leaving. Most of the population had le- a good amount of the population had left. Uh, some had stayed, um, and you know, I think th- uh, people should come in legally. There should be a legal system where people do come in legally. Um, and so, I mean, a lot of the issues with uh, uh, people fleeing—that's really just the government, the corrupt government that's in power oh. right now, letting everybody that's in. Not- Okay, it's the government, right? The, the U.S. Yeah. government I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah, and again, Tariq, I just want to I just want to end with this po- point here, government. major point. Most okay. uh, most <laughs> uh, black people in America that are in power are FBA, and uh, the ones that are uh, holding back uh, uh, reparations along with other benefits for black people. Are people who are FBA who are poli- in political listen, power here, listen, to do listen to, me, listen, to, to make, listen to me? Listen, go ahead. Listen, 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 listen. The black people, there's no black person in a position of power. All right, there's not <laughs> one black. No, no. Who do you think is in a position of power? What no, black person do you I, think is in a power? I agree. There, there's, uh, there's hidden, hand, there's a hidden hand in play here. I agree. Listen, listen. But there, Let me, in, term, on, in terms of title, there are, there are more black oh. Americans, FBA, who are uh, in position of power more than any uh, immigrant. What group. power are they? What, who? Who? They, what power? What power? Like in, in the political world, there are more, I can guarantee you, there are more congressmen and women that are foundational black Americans. They're not, they, 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 they kind of have to do what people tell them. I want you to understand this, I, the I, power. Go ahead. The, listen, listen to me. I want you to understand foundational Black American culture. Our power is not who's in political office. Our power as foundational Black Americans has always, always, always been the grassroots. And the grassroots power comes from us being on code. That's where I, that's what gets shit done. That has always got things done in America. The Black grassroots the black political class, they follow our suit. You understand? Okay. The white people make you think that they put a couple of black leaders who influenced everybody to do the right thing. No. Every good movement that we got shit done, it started with the streets, the grassroots, all of it. The civil rights movement, that was really fueled by what was happening in the streets. They want you to believe that it was a bunch of Negroes getting beat up by being nonviolent is what made them change the civil rights laws. That wasn't it. It was the grassroots who was out there whooping ass for real, for real. I agree. That's what got changed. It's all it's us, the, the streets, the grassroots, the masses being on code with each other. That's where the strength is. And I want y'all over there in those African countries to understand, damn the government. It's y'all getting on code with each other because y'all got all those tribal differences. You can't get on code like you need to. And that's been your weakness. So y'all have to start remixing the way you think as far as these tribalistic differences that y'all hold on to there. And then you bring that over here. And This is why we delineate from that because we don't want that tribal stuff over here yeah. we only want people around us who's going to be on code yeah when we're fighting against the white supremacists we don't want some flea and tether to come over here and tell us that racism ain't so bad because they can get a job that's some shit that undermines right, there's us. A spin. we understand there, there's the spin. weak there, there's the spin. 
You, you know, that's not a spin, okay, dude. So, I'm saying some real shit. No, right now. I, I agree y'all with do that, you dude. Said, but then here comes the spin. No, it, it sounds no, 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 because you need to hear it. It sounds bad, but y'all do that type of shit. Okay, y'all okay, do brother, that. Listen, listen. I, I totally no, 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 agree no, 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 with you. No, 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 I, no. I totally agree with okay. you for delineation. All right, and okay. I support it. I support it. And I think all right, thing, okay, you, okay, because, okay, because it okay, said, brother, okay, all right. He He's one of these people who just want to keep explaining. Thank you so much. I understand, but there ain't no goddamn buts. It's time to listen because. Brother, you came from a fleeing culture, all right? See, the, the, when, when people flee, they don't want to hear that shit. You want to talk around like you didn't flee. You flee, all y'all fled, my nigga. All right, let's keep it a buck. I don't want to hear flee explaining. Let's let's get real tonight. You fled. That's okay. That's that's what happens. Y'all fled. When you flee, you this time to shut the fuck up because I ain't trying to hear what you got to say, really. As far as how to get power strategically, and your ass then fled. See, that's the thing with the tethers. And I'm not saying you're a tether, brother, because I think you were very respectful in the conversation. But I'm just giving you some some hardcore game here that you need to hear. Because y'all want people to sit here and play games with you. When you flee, y'all don't bring y'all ass around us talking that bullshit. Because that's the problem. Niggas be fleeing. You were off code back home. Your family was off code. Then you bring that off code behavior over here, and then you come here and get you a couple of little jobs, and then start telling us how racism ain't so bad, and you niggas just need to work hard. How come you niggas don't have two jobs like me? And then, then, then stop it. And we're saying, hey man, cut that nonsense out because it's weak and it undermines us. Instead of us. Or you getting on code with us because we know what the problem is. The problem is systematic white supremacy. And the reason why any black person can get a job is because enough of us, foundational black Americans, can get on code to kind of move the legislation from a grassroots level. We get on code and we let them know, hey, man, things are going to have to be a little bit different. You see? And they know that us being codified, we can get things moving and shaking. There's a reason why they keep flooding our communities with immigrants and tethers. They know that these people are off code and these people can't wait to kiss a white ass and undermine us. They know. That's why they are opening the floodgates directly into these black neighborhoods. They know this off code floodgate of tethers is going to undermine us they know this you understand and we're saying no we're getting more codified we're delineating we're checking everybody's hairline because we're not going to let people come over here and start sneaking among us trying to blend in so that they can undermine us the way they undermine people back in their homeland that's the reality dude that's the long and short of it Y'all, we're not letting y'all come among us. Hey, let's all do it. We're all black. There's a black tribe of niggas in South Carolina who likes Africa. How come we can't be like those niggas? No. Because they, they can't go to Africa. And when we ask how come they can't go, well, I can't even go. If I go back home, they're going to be mean to me. All right, then. Stop selling us Wakanda, then. Damn. Please, y'all, stop trying to sell us Wakanda. Yeah, y'all keep proving our point. Y'all keep sitting up telling us how we need to. Uh, Africa is so popping, and yeah, this black person is um, uh, uh, paying homage to the African lineage and Africa this and Africa that. Uh, okay, well, damn it, what's Africa doing for that person? Oh, nothing. Africa's too fucked up. Oh, all right then. That's the point. That's the point. See. What people want, they want foundational black Americans to sit here propping up the Wakanda ideology of Africa. They only want us to do that. They want us sitting up here just putting Africa on a pedestal because we, we've been the only ones doing that. We've been the ones kind of speaking highly and saying, hey, let's not let y'all denigrate Africa the way, you know, the, the white media has been denigrating it. No, let's, let's, you know, we can promote the positives. You know, I've done that. That's why people be like, you did heat and colors. 
how come you're mean to us? I'm not mean, but let, we're going to keep it a buck. We have been propping you guys up more than you have. You know, we try to prop up black people globally and find the positives so that people can all be on the same page. But when there's a problem coming from a certain sector that ain't nobody trying to rectify, that needs to be pointed out. And y'all ain't trying to get rid of your tribal bullshit. And y'all want to sit here and say the government. The government is you. See, y'all over in Africa, man, they really got to start learning in the Caribbean, too. They got to really start learning the power of being on code with each other. You dig? It's a real interesting dynamic. Right, let's get some more people in here because we're in here. <laughs> 